Can you hear me now? <laughs> all right. My wife told me to keep my hands in my pocket where I wouldn't do this all the time. <laughs> good morning. It's good to have everybody here, and Happy New Year. Um, we, uh, I have a couple letters here I want to read. One says, Dear Center Family, we are so blessed to have such a loving and caring church family. You, your act of kindness um, shown, to us was, so, shown to us was overwhelming and, and heartfelt. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. May the Lord Almighty continue to bless you and your family this new year. We can accomplish much together if we go in his name. And then from Proverbs 11:25. Whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. We love each of you, Mitch and Beth. So they say Happy New Year from the Wilsons. And then something that's near to my heart is um, Pastor's Pantry. And I had a thing here from um, Donna from Pastor's Pantry. said, on behalf of the Pastor's Pantry, thank you for your support. And we have supported the pantry this year, and thank you so very much for that. And please support us in 2022. We thank you so much. All right, now to the announcements. First of all, let's remember uh, Renee Craver Bailey's family, and um, you know she passed away before Christmas, and they're going through that now. And please remember her or her family, and um, and when you see them, you know. Let them know that they have the church family to lean on. This is my first time, so uh, getting used to it. <laughs> and the flowers that are up here today are for Parker Brinkley's seventh birthday. Can we give them a hand? All right, announcements. The worship committee will meet Monday, January the 10th at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall to plan for 2022. Uh, disciple Bible study will start back on Tuesday, January the 11th. Uh, the disciple Bible study will start back and uh, it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. in classroom 3. Uh, we have a new Sunday school superintendent uh, Carrie Hollingsworth. Carrie, would you stand up where everybody can see you? <laughs> We're glad to have you, Carrie. And just want to let folks know there will be a meeting for all Sunday school teachers on Thursday, January the 20th at 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall to discuss a unified curriculum for all of us to get on the same page with teaching and growing as servants of Christ. Thank you, Carrie. So all you Sunday school teachers, please attend that. And I assume she wants folks that would like to become Sunday school teachers to be there also, because there's always a need for that. I can tell you that for sure. Thank you, Carrie. And uh, Operation Christmas Child Donations, the American, he American Heritage Girls will be collecting different items for OCC each month this year. For the month of January, please bring in hats and gloves for children of all ages. There will be a bin at the entrance of the church. Thank you. For our youth news for January, the Youth 2022 kickoff night is tonight, January the 2nd, in the Christian Fellowship Center. The youth will be making chicken stew on January the 29th in the Christian Fellowship Center all day, so make sure you get your orders in for that because they run out. Uh, Joy Kids Lock-In. Joy Kids Lock-In is on uh, January the 14th. We'll start at 3 p.m. and go to January the 15th at 10 a.m. So I assume that's a Saturday and Sunday. And it'll be in the Christian... Friday and Saturday? Okay. Uh, I've been overruled. It's Friday and Saturday. <laughs> and it's in the Christian Fellowship Center. The uh, 2022 giving envelopes are at the uh, back of the church when you come in, uh, the, at the back of the sanctuary, and also are in the Sunday school classes. So if you haven't gotten yours, please make sure you pick them up. And if it's family members that you see there, you can pick their, them up for theirs too, if you would. Center Women's Ministry, January 3rd. 
The women's ministry will meet tomorrow, January the 3rd, at 9 a.m. to take down the Christmas decorations throughout the church. Your help is needed and appreciated, and I suspect they will welcome any help they can get, so if any of you guys can come and help out also, they, we, I mean, they look great, and they need all the help they can get, so thank you so much. All right, let's uh, have our blessing now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together and into this new year. We ask you to be our guiding light throughout 2022. We pray for the people who have been infected with this terrible COVID virus, as well as other illnesses that affect our loved ones. We pray that you will put your healing hand on them and restore their health. Father, we ask that you ask you to comfort those that have lost loved ones be with our nation and our leaders guide us to your perfect salvation go with us throughout the coming week and let us constantly give you the praise and glory for your many blessings you have bestowed upon us we ask everything in your precious that's what you get for having two tasers holy name father and amen thank you so much for coming to center and we will now have our special music. That was beautiful, and I really like the snow scenes because that may be all the snow we get to see <laughs> with all this warm temperature. Let us stand and sing, Angels We Have Heard on High.
first and fourth verses. All right, any little kiddos? Come on, come forward. Come on, come on. Come on, Addie. Come on, Marlene. Come on, Cece. Come on, Gabriella. Isabel and Autumn, don't you all want to come up? McKinley. Micah, why don't you come up, Micah? <gasps> Brady and Parker. All right, I'm going to sit down really low here because I want to sit up there. You want to sit here? Wherever you want to sit. All right, so did anybody do anything special Saturday night? What was Saturday night? What was Saturday night? Friday night. Oh, see, I don't even know what night it is. See, what, what happened? Did anybody do anything special Friday night? Yeah, what did you do, Micah? Played VR. Anybody else do anything special Friday night? Well, what was Friday night? New Year's Eve. And so yesterday was New Year's. The first day of what? First day of January. Anybody know the year? 2022, which could be like 2020 T-O-O, but no, it's 2022 as in the number. All right, so we're going to do things a little bit different this first Sunday. Um, one thing, we're going we're gonna to sit in here today because I know that we have one person right here who was in Miss Carrie and Mr. Lynn's Vacation Bible School class. And so Mr. Lynn is going to preach for us today. So I want you all to stand here and listen to the word because it's just going to be a little bit different experience and it's a new year. And I'm going to give you all something so later you can work on it and help the little ones do it. Um, starting with Jesus, there's some little games in here. But first, first, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, it says, For I resolve to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So at the beginning of the new year, it's traditional that we make resolutions. Does anybody know what a resolution is? What is it, Micah? I wish to do something throughout the whole, throughout the whole year. Has anybody heard moms or dads or anybody? Try to get better at something, yeah. Anybody else have a resolution? You have a resolution? Any, any of you grown-ups out there have a resolution other than losing weight maybe? That's what grown-ups do. They want to lose weight, and they want to change something about themselves. But resolution. Anybody out there got a good one? Do what? Try to help more people. Do you think that's a good resolution? Yeah, that is a pretty good one. How about you, Addie? Anything you'd like to do better this coming year? Be better at? No. How about you, Parker? Since you're celebrating your birthday. Yeah, you can celebrate your birthday. No. All right. Well, I'm going to, let's see, um, a wise man once made a list of resolutions that I'm going to share with you all today, and I believe that they're resolutions that will help to ensure that we'll all have a happy and prosperous new year. 
In the new year, I want you to be sure to lie and cheat and drink and swear and steal more than you did last year. I want you to, now listen, lie back and relax just a little bit more this year. Let a little bit more life happen to you without so much worry. How about this? I want you to cheat. I want you to cheat failure. Don't be afraid to try something new because you think you might fail. Uh, because it's through failure that we learn the most valuable lessons. And I want you to drink from the fountain of knowledge. Many people around you have already been down the roads you've, that you're about to travel. Learn from the mistakes that they've made. Take what they have learned and use it. Now I want you to swear. I'm not a scout, so I can't. Swear to do your best all the time in every situation. That is all anybody will ever ask of you. And I want you to steal. I want you to steal a little bit of time for God. Every day, take a little bit more time to develop your relationship with God. So if you lie and you cheat and you drink and you swear and you steal just a little bit more next year, you're going to have a profitable and enjoyable year ahead. God bless all of you in the new year. Okay, And all of you, God bless all of you. And don't forget to lie, cheat, swear, steal, and uh, yeah, all those good things. All right, so let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, help us to live this year in a way that will be pleasing to you. In God's holy son's name we pray, amen. Now listen, go back and sit with mommies and daddies, and we're going to listen to Mr. Lynn preach, okay? Here, take, take a little puzzle page with you, all right? Well, good morning. I'm not Mitch Wilson. Um, he showed up at the first service, and I went, what are you doing here, man? Anyway, I'm happy to be here. And um, I wanted to lift up some folks for prayer. Uh, Dyke and Doyle Leonard, um, they're doing better. They're still in ICU. Uh, and Sheila was at the first service, and um, I did not, um, I, she, she lowered her wind and I hugged her. I was so glad. We've been praying for them to be able to get out of the hospital. Uh, Mary Sue Martin, still in the hospital. J.C. Johnson, want to pray for him. And Jennifer Craven, and Greg Boger, who's home and doing better. And Martha Slaybach will have major surgery tomorrow. We want to pray for Martha and her husband, Dean, with bladder cancer. So let's all... Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, how sweet to know that we can come to you for everything and that you love us the way you do. Man alive, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you can because if someone makes us mad, we turn our back. And yet you always keep looking at us saying, stay with me, be close to me. Let me help you. Draw near to you, Lord, and you will draw near to us. You want us to. Let that be, God. I hope that that's our, our resolution for this year, is be near you. Thank you so much for Tina sharing today. And just thank you for everybody here. We pray for those we lifted up. For Doyle and Dyke, they've been in ICU so long. Please help them get out. Their spouses want them to. We want them to. Help them to be better. Also, Mary Sue, help her, God, in the hospital that she can come home. And J.C. Johnson and Jennifer, help her, God. Greg, we pray for him. I'm glad he's home. Help him keep getting better. For Martha, help her, God. And, and she just, she has a surgery tomorrow. Give her peace. Help her feel your arms around her. And that help her know you love her, even though she already knows it, that she will just sense your presence. And also for Dean, help him with his cancer. And it's his, his wife has surgery tomorrow. Take care of them both. Thank you for everybody that's here, God. Be with our country. Lord, help us. Help our country. Help us be the people that help others know how great you are so that more people in our world will know you and love you so that we won't hurt and steal and take from others and kill each other. Help us show the love and care that you've shown to us, to the people around us, beginning with our families. But Lord, just thank you for this time, for this new year. 
Bless this time with your Holy Spirit. Help us, God. Help me as I share in just a little bit. In Jesus' name. And help us now as we lift up your beautiful prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forget the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for helping me. I forgot it already. So, if our ushers will come, we will not out try to cheat God. We're going to give to him our tithes and see what he does. It's amazing. Let's be tithers in the new year. Give to him our tithes. He's done so much for us and, um, and our offering.
can never thank you enough. Bless these gifts and all those who gave that we will see that you're greater than any gift. You, everything belongs to you and that we will see what a wonderful God you are every day. Bless these gifts in thy name. Amen. Be seated. <laughs> you may see. Thank you. I was so happy when I saw that Mitch preached down here. For all those, is this fine? I mean, you can, with Facebook and all, we're okay. Um, I, I wanted to tell you that um, um, I stole a hymnal when I left Arcadia a while ago. I thought, I thought what am I going to do? So I saw one up here and I went, did I turn it back into them? But they laughed because I, you know, I didn't mean to take it. But anyway, but I've been running around, and my wife said, take, make two copies of your sermon in case the rain drenches you this morning. But it did, and it was great. We had a, we had a great time. In fact, I was so scared. Of, um, he said 30 minutes. I said, I planned for an hour. What's up? But um, anyway, um, everything went great. But I, I wanted to tell you before I get started, um, I am talking about the star and the star that pointed to wise men. Um, and um, I wanted to use the New Revised Standard Version. The reason why I had you see it, I love it when Mitch has people stand for the reverence of the word. It's beautiful. Um, but I wanted to use the New Revised Standard Version. Well, I don't have a lot of mine. I got, went through the bigger print because of my eyes, and then I got contacts, and so I can read it a little bit better. But anyway, I haven't used this Bible in so many years, I can't even tell you. And so last night I went upstairs to the, um, my, to the bookshelf, and I got it, and I opened it up, and I saw May 27th, 1990, and it was given to me by my Sunday night disciple Bible study group, and that was at Mount Pleasant. And all the people that signed it, and Sylvia was one, and um, all these people, I thought, these were stars to me. These were people who prayed and helped me along, and, and uh, like Richard did a while ago, and you know, they didn't talk about me behind my back, I don't guess, but, you know, they just, they were up front, and they just loved me and prayed for me, and, and anyway, and a lot of them are in heaven now, you know, and who would have ever, ever, ever thought that would be, wouldn't be but just a few years later that Mitch Wilson would be in the same presence of these people as, as, as their pastor, and they would pray for him and love him and care for him. And so, you know, and I thought, I'm going to read from this even if I have to squint real good. But um, anyway, I wanted to read. I just thought that was just, just a beautiful thing to see their names and how much I love and miss them. But I'll see them in heaven again. Um, Matthew 2, verse 1. And I was, I'm doing 1 through 12, and that's long. And, and uh, I, I just wanted to be able to share it and let you listen to it. Because every time I read the Bible, there's something new I read, and I go, man, I wish I'd read, I used that before, or whatever. So here we go, uh, Matthew 2, 1 through 12. The time of King Herod, uh, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who's been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star, at its rising. I thought that was really neat. At, it, at its rising, um, we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Verse 7, Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word, so that I may also come and pay him homage. And that was a lie. He lied to them. When they heard the, the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising 
until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. It's beautiful. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to old Herod, I threw that in, I'm sorry, not to return to Herod, they left their, con their own country, I'm sorry, they left for their own country by another road. May the, God bless those words to our hearing, to our heart. Let us pray. Lord, how great you are. You're just the bomb. You're the best. Without you, we can do nothing. We may think we can, but we are, we can't do it. We just can't live life to its fullest. And I love you so much, and I ask you just to move me out of your way now. And um, also, bless Mitch and Beth to help them get rest this week. We love them. But in this moment in time, in my life and ours, just, just move me out of your way and speak through me what all you want to say today. You're so good. You've helped me so much this morning and all my life. And just please come, Holy Spirit, and bless us all so that we can be a blessing in this world. In thy name, amen. Well, thank you. I heard that amen. Glad you're up front. Okay, now, I don't know about you, but I hate for Christmas to come and go. Um, some people want it to go. I don't. I love it. In fact, it's, here's the thing. We look forward to it coming so much, and then it's like, whew, it's gone. It's gone before you know it. We can't wait for it to get here, and then whew, it just leaves. It's by us. But I love the memories. I think about some of the memories. Some of the memories of uh, when I was a youth, I loved to go see and carol, go caroling with my, um, with my youth group, with our youth group. I loved to, um, what did I write? I've already done this three times. How could I forget? Stuff myself with good food. Can't forget that. And to go to my grandmother's house on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day I love, now she lived in High Falls, North Carolina. Three services. Nobody knows where that is. Does anybody know where High Falls is? I know you do, Sylvia. You've been there. Anybody? Okay, it's toward Pinehurst, but it's the countryside. It's just, I love it. My grandmother lived there, all my aunts and uncles on my mom's side. But I love to go. I love to go to her house because there was plenty of hugs and lots of food, and it was, it was wonderful. But what I loved the most about going there was I loved to chase her chickens, and she hated when I did that. Uh, but she's in heaven, and I know that she'll be, anyway. Um, I love to unwrap my brother's gifts and mine too at the same time and to watch my uncle spit tobacco. I mean, they could shoot that tobacco all the way out in the yard and I was watching my step at the same time. It's just no greater time of the year. What do you think? Half a yard of sleep. Come on. <laughs> all right, whatever. So June, when I would preach at my last church, June would be making faces. So don't start now, June, okay? <laughs> But what I loved the most was I would turn off the lights in my house in Greensboro. We had a little house in Greensboro, and, and we'd cut the lights off and turn on the Christmas music, and I'd lay on the couch and fix me a cup of coffee, Marty. I loved it, and I'm a coffeeaholic. But anyway, that's beside the point. But I would lay on the couch, and I'd look at my Christmas tree, and it was so beautiful, you know, with the tinsel, just beautiful. But my favorite part of the tree was high above the lowest sets of light was the star. At Arcadia, they had the star on the top. And I went, yes, yeah, high above the lowest sets of lights was the star, not like an ordinary star to light up the room, but the star that symbolized the one in Matthew's gospel. The star in the east that pointed the wise men. They didn't have GPS. That pointed them to our Savior. Our Savior had been born. The star had been expected for a long time. People longed for it. They talked about it. The prophets talked about it. They looked forward. All the people did. But they looked forward for the, because when a star would glow like that in the east, it meant that God had come into the world to say, I'm here and I'm going to help you and save us from our sins. But most people, they couldn't wait for the king to come. But, but not everybody felt like that. And what was so interesting to me is how it affected everybody. Mostly, I'm not, I can't talk about everybody, but I can talk about in the scripture how it affected the, those who saw the star, how they really 
for those who really saw the star. They came from the east, those fellows called wise men. They were magi. They also astro they were astrologers. And they searched the sky for the star to appear. And all, all through the centuries, they kept looking and watching and waiting for the great event to know that God was coming, the good news that Christ Jesus had come to earth. And finally, one night, far up in the east, the star brightened the sky like never before. And the Magi were so amazed. We don't know if they came to their feet, but I figured they were just so amazed and excited because finally, the very thing people had longed and looked for for so long, they were the ones who got to see the star. So they got together their stuff and they hurried on their way, asking everybody, even Herod the king. Now, you know, I think about children here because we're thinking, what made them ask Herod the king? He had a terrible reputation. But really, they didn't care. They wanted to ask everybody. Matthew said, they asked them, where is the child who's been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising. And we have come to pay him homage, which is to worship him. There was excitement in the air, but not everybody was excited. Herod, he just, I mean, put on the dog in front of them, I'm thinking. But really, he was, Matthew says, he was frightened. He was scared. He was so jealous. If anybody, he thought anybody wanted to take his kingdom, <clears throat> he would have them killed. And so we know that because he killed his mother, I'm sorry, his wife, her mother, and three sons. They called him the old murderous man. Augustus, the Roman emperor, said it was safer to be a pig than a son. Little wonder why seeing, little wonder why hearing the news, Herod was literally shaken and fearful and enraged. What an effect the star had on Herod. But the, the wise men, nevertheless, hurried on their way, watching the star, following the star, and it must have moved along. And they followed the star. And you know, I was in, it must have been, I couldn't sleep last night. I should have called Mitch and said, man, are you awake? But I didn't. Anyway, but I'm thinking, I, for some reason it dawned on me. In the Old Testament, at night, God led the Hebrew people by the fire. And in the day, it was by clouds. So he picked for the wise men a star. The star would lead them to where the Christ child was. So they go. And the Bible tells us, and have, no, let me back up here. Um, the Bible says that the Magi followed the star until it stopped over the place where the child was. That's just a fascinating thing. That that child just, I mean, that, that star just moved until it stopped over that house. And they were overjoyed. Matthew says they were filled with joy. And they went inside, and when they did, they saw the Mar Mary, the mother, and they saw the baby. And you know, they, they fell on their knees. Matthew says they just fell on their knees. And because right in front of them was the Christ that would unlock within them their gifts and treasures and change their direction. And staying a while, the Magi knew they had to leave. And they had to go back to their country. But they did by another road. And that's what I love. The Bible tells us, and when they were warned, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Another road. God revealed to them that Herod did not want to worship the child. He wanted to kill the child. What a nightmare. The two, what a vision. There's a story that reminds me of this one. A woman whose husband died back in the fall. He was 42, so young. She loved him. And when he died, she died. She had loved the Lord, but she just was stuck in her grief. It's so sad. That's why I love Sylvie doing grief share because grief is something that can grip us forever. I mean, for years to come. And we just need to be free, talk it through and cry it through and work with other people through it and the Lord. But anyway, she had friends that invited her places and she didn't want to go. She had no joy, no excitement. She had just shut down. Well, it was the week before Christmas. And she decided to take a walk by herself. She walked out of the house and down the windy road that led to the village down below. And there was a little church building. And inside the church building, I love our children here. The children were there, and they were putting together a nativity scene. It was great. She went in and sat in the pew, and she just looked at them. 
And one little girl, they connected. He was trying to, she had a wise man doll. She was trying to get him to kneel down like a man. Trying to get him to kneel down in front of the Christ child. And suddenly, the little girl looks at the woman. She doesn't know her. But she said, this is my wise man doll. And he's taken another road to Bethlehem. Another road. A different road. Not the same road. A different road. Suddenly, the woman, and we're all different. Different things connect with us. That's why only God knows. That woman saw a star. That little child pointed her beyond her grieving self to the one that loved and cherished her more than a spouse or anybody else, who loved her and wanted her to be free. Free. You see, she had been in a rut. She had felt like Christ had betrayed her and had and taken away her, child, her husband that she loved. But in that moment, God strengthened her and gave her reason to go back into her life, but now by a different road, a star is born. That little girl was a star to that woman. Who has been a star in your life? I could just spend all day just us talking that. Who has been a star in your life? Who has pointed you in the direction of Jesus? You see, from the manger, the baby is born to show us God's amazing love. We wouldn't know God. We would have scripture, but we wouldn't know him without Jesus. And he came to be our star to point us to God's unbelievable, life-changing love and grace. And why people would go their life without accepting it, I don't know. But it's up to us to point them in that direction. So whether from the east or top of a Christmas tree, the star is a star of hope. And it strengthens us and directs us into a world needing a star. If you have found the Savior and allowed him to be born in your heart, God has equipped you with the Holy Spirit and filled you with love and forgiveness and, and light so that you can shine bright, shine bright in a world that needs a Savior because he can forgive whoever you point them, when you point them to him and give them love and light, and change the direction in their life. We don't know what people are going through, but it's the best gift you could ever give anybody is to be a star for them. A little boy had a part in the Christmas play. I love this. His role was to hold up an aluminum foil star. That was it. And so he held it up. The play was great. And then when it was over, he told his mother he had the main part in the play. And she said, you did, not Jesus or Mary or Joseph. But the star, he said, I had the main part in the play. And she said, you did. He said, yeah. He said, I got to show everybody how to find Jesus. At Arcadia, they cheered. They, they <laughs> clapped. Can you believe? He said, I got to show everybody how to find Jesus. He knows more than a lot of adults I know. Because here's the thing. That little boy was a star for God. Are you a star for God? Who are you pointing to? I'm telling you, my wife has been my greatest blessing, and I don't say it because she's here, but I'm saying it because she helps me know the times I make stuff about me. And when I do, it's a slippery slope, and it can get ugly. But when we make it about Jesus, we take ourselves out of the way. And we let everything we do and say, we want it to glorify him, not us. Are you a star for anybody? Not like a TV star, a movie star, or whatever star that makes it about themselves. Have you been a star that pointed somebody to Jesus in your life? I thought about a Christmas, somebody gave me a card one time and it said, talked about when you get to heaven, how many people will come up to you and say, thank you Thank you for what you did, for what you share with me, because I'm here because of you pointing me to Jesus. It's Jesus that makes it makes us is the reason why we get there. But I thought, how many people will be in heaven because of you and me? And what we've said or not said. Are you a star? Do you really want to be? There's no better time of the year than right now to want to be a star. Let him forgive us. Fill us full of his Holy Spirit. And, and help us to shine bright. Have you done that? 
Do you want to, Christ wants you to invite him in, in, but you may not. You may be like Herod and afraid to give up reign and control of your life. To become a star may be a threat to your comfortable lifestyle. You will not have the same friends if you follow his lead. Or you may be like the wise men, eager and excited to have Christ in your life and that you want to shine bright, you want him to help you. Are you ready to become a star today? Or you might be a star, but you're heavy, you're carrying a heavy a burden, and you're not shining as bright as you used to. But you're here today, and you want help and strength. Nothing makes me closer, feel closer than when somebody asks for help, and you want to ask for help and get help, the help only God can give you. Whoever you are and whatever your need is, please make the decision today to be a star for this new year. Because one thing is clear, if you let your actions and your words shine out and help others find Jesus, if you become a star today, you will go back into life, but you'll be different. You'll go back a different road. The good news of Christmas is it's so powerful. It transforms anybody, everybody, a person into a star. What kind of star? A star that points other people to Jesus. Star is born. Let us pray. Father, I don't want to be like Herod. I don't want to be about myself. I want to be about you. And I just pray that you'll help us all, me included, that we will want that and we'll ask you for help and that we will be honest with you and be available for you always to do what you need us to do and talk to whoever and be a, a good example to others. We're, we're broken. We fall short. But with your help, we can be a star and point others to you. Because without you, I would never have made anything of my life. So thank you. Help us all to want that more than anything. In Jesus' name, amen. Molly talked to me about this in the bleak midwinter. And really, I thought that was a great hymn to close with. Because when it talks about, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I'd give him a lamb. But I can do my part. I'll give him my heart. And you know, if we don't give him my heart, you will never shine bright. Ever. So let's do that as we sing in the bleak midwinter. can't say a word else except go in peace live with the holy spirit shine bright don't let nobody take your light 
The only way we can get rid of it is to give it away. Shine bright, shine for, uh, for Christ, and you'll see what a difference it makes in your life. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.